Hi everybody, welcome to this week's question and answer video. My name is David, this is Demar's Coaching, and I do a weekly question and answer video every Monday. I'm answering your guys' questions from the last one. Please go down below, ask me anything you want, and come back next Monday for my answer. And let me know what you think of my answer. Let me know if I understand your question, you understand my answer, stuff like that. If I missed it, ask me again. Sometimes they get erased or I miss it. It's not on purpose. Um, I have a lot of questions this week, which is great. A lot of great questions. I couldn't put them all on here because the just the video would be just too long. I don't want these videos to be an hour or so and people get discouraged and not watch them. But I always try to answer your questions, whether it's in writing or typing in the comment section or on the video. Okay. Thank you. So let's get right into them because there's so many and I don't want to make this video really long. First I asked last week, I started the petition. I got it fixed. It's running again. And I asked you guys to support it. And you are. It's growing. Thank you so very much. I can't appreciate your guys' support enough. You're making things that I want and I think of and I dream about come true. So thank you so much. Thank you. Let's get into the questions. Oh, please support. If you haven't already, Stop Narcissistic Online Bullying Petition. It's right down below. Everyone in the world. Follow the link and just say yes, that's it. You won't be bothered or anything. You don't have to donate any money or anything. Just support it. And if you think you haven't been a victim, you might have. Don't even know it. But it's only going to get worse. It's a detriment to society. Thank you for your support. Okay, let's get into the questions. All I ask is you guys give us your locations. Let us know where you are. It can be general. Thank you. L-I-L-A-H. Lila. Lila. Actually, I think it might be Lila. You can correct me. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. Hi, David. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing things pretty well. Thanks. I live in Illinois. I'm dealing with a community of mothers. Mobbers. Mobbers. Sorry. I'm being constantly harassed and stalked by a board member. And I had to report this person to the police after I was assaulted and battered. Wow. The person hit my hand and my cell phone flew to the ground. I'm being illegally surveyed. I mean, illegally surveilled and I'm a victim of hate crimes. I'm noticing that people are in a similar situation as I am. It's harassment and mobbing on steroids. It's a nightmare and these perpetrators want to isolate and destroy their reputation by spreading lies and gossip. These are psychopaths working in large groups to take down targeted individual. This world is going down and toxic people seem to be everywhere. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I've experienced somewhat similar, not to try to downplay your experience. It, 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 the world's not going down though. We can't think that. Yeah. It might just be our experiences because when I tell anybody about my experience about this, they have no idea what I'm talking about. They've never seen it, even though it does exist, but they don't have to deal with it. It's not the whole world. It's just us. I promise. It's just these toxic people doing it to their targets. Awful. Take care of yourself. Start understanding and seeing and accepting what you can control and what you can't. Don't look. Don't read it. Don't have people tell you and stick by the law. Okay? Keep filing police reports, number one. Two, don't let the police discourage you. Sometimes they don't think it's a big deal. It's not as bad as it, as it is. They think that, you know, and they don't want to do paperwork. or something that doesn't want to bother people. So stick with it if you can. And if you can, get a lawyer to pursue these charges if police won't. But, but you've got to take care of yourself first, okay? If that means you don't do anything about it right now, but just make yourself feel better, then do that. Hire support, hire help, write, journal, okay? Take care of yourself and try, amongst all the negativity, try to stay positive. Be grateful for something, okay? I'm really sorry. I know this is a problem. That's why I started the petition. You're more than welcome to push that petition everywhere you want or start your own. I'm really sorry. Guys, I'm, I'm serious. We need help. We need people to support this stuff, to do something about it and not just say, oh, no, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't affect me. You hear some of these people's stories and they're awful. I don't even tell my story. I don't give them attention. But it's awful. It's awful. And it's the number one cause of young people taking their lives. Number one. It's bad. I'm really sorry. Victoria from the Bay Area. Hi, Victoria. I started watching your channel around six years ago. I was in a very dark place. You guys showed me how to leave a toxic relationship safely. Not too long after I did end up having a stroke, my family dis 
decided this was a perfect time to abuse me. And I got through all the toxic abuse with your help, David and the beautiful people on this channel. I'm six years old and looking forward to the future. Thank you. Beautiful. Yay. Yay, Victoria. Thanks for saying that. Not not to us, but the, about yourself. That's great. Yay, Victoria. It's an honor to watch and be a part of. Ura Rodriguez from California again. The discarded family from California. Hi. Petition signed. Thank you. Thank you for all you do once again and always answer my questions. Thank you for being the thank you for being the very beginning of my children and my healing journey. You really make a difference in this world for what you do. Thank you. Thanks for telling me. You're welcome. Another question. Most of the time I hear in comments or questions that when the BPD discards you, they go straight to someone else. Post everything on social media with the new person they are with. In my case, I did find out there was a woman my ex-BPD started talking to. He never has posted absolutely nothing on social media about him or the woman he is was talking to. No pictures, no nothing about him and the woman. Like, not even a single thing about himself either. Let's see. He's never posted absolutely anything on social media about him or he was talking to. Uh, I mostly hear that when the BPD discards that they post right away, they are out in public with the new person, etc. Why do you think he's not posting anything about himself or about the woman he is was talking to? Do you think it's for me to not find out, even though I did? Does he want to keep me a secret from me? I always like to hear your thoughts. Just curious and hope. You know, I... Um, I, I, you know, I, I'm never going to say I know what someone's doing, why, what their intent is and stuff. And I don't even know him, right? It, It's just guess. That's all I can do. Guess. Is I think he's keeping her secret from you. And in a way, keeping you secret from her, right? I'm guessing someone like this, like him, has a ton of shame, thinks he's a horrible person and doesn't want people to know. Keeps that secret. That's like what a covert narcissist is. And probably feels ashamed, maybe, of what he's done. He knows it's wrong, at least. And and is desperate for people in his life to help him feel better, carry him. And doesn't want anyone to ruin the only person that's there for him now. Possibly. He may not be so excited about a new relationship. Just still tons of shame doesn't feel like posting things you know? we're all different e even in a personality disorder borderlines are all different yes they have lots of similar behaviors but all different personalities different brains okay um so i don't know I i'm guessing that he's not doing well all he has is this one woman and doesn't want her to know what a bad person he is doesn't want you to find out and tell her doesn't want her to start asking questions about his family. Maybe lied to her that he even has a family. You know, if I'm not going to be a father to my children, I really don't want to tell everyone. Yeah. If I mistreated my wife, I don't want anyone to know her. My guess. Sorry, I couldn't tell you more. I, I Obviously, you know, I don't know. You just wanted to hear. And thanks for what you said again. Dave, me from Chi Town, Augie. Augie from Chicago, so I'm guessing. And the name's David. Thanks. The constant question is do they know how they are damaging others? Not really. It's on a person to person basis. Don't therapists recognize that they are dysfunctional? Yes. Yeah. I, I don't, I've never heard of that being a problem. Even if they don't know what they are or anything or about personality disorders, I mean, they can clearly look at you and say, your husband is not talking to you, being gone for periods of times and yelling at you and abusing you. That's your, your marriage isn't working. It's dysfunctional. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you said, you know, it's rhetorical. Keep up the great work. Maybe you know this too, but the question keeps circling in your head. Uh, do they know they are damaging others? I, I can't just say yes. I know that some do. And I know that some don't. That's for sure. I know that. I don't know 
where any particular person lies on either end or in the middle somewhere. Awareness, again, is like an iceberg. We only are aware of the tip. The, that's the biggest problem with this mental illness. Lack of awareness. Lack of awareness of who I am. Lack of awareness of, of what I'm doing. Mindfulness, don't understand. I don't understand how it affects other people. I mean, empathy is I don't, I don't really know that it hurts you, so it's not a problem. Lacking empathy. Borderlines may lack some empathy, but the biggest problem is is that they they don't understand how their behaviors affect other people around them, big time. I don't know if that helps. I mean, because we're not talking about one person. So the person that you're talking about could be very aware, could be not aware at all, or somewhere in the middle. It, it, it depends how much they hate themselves. How much can they look at themselves? How much can they introspect? How much accountability can they take? How much remorse do they have? How much compassion do they have? How much empathy? The psychopath has none. Do they, do they recognize the damage they cause others? No. Because they don't even know how it makes you feel. Nor do they care. Sorry, I can't ask it or tell you more, but I just, I gotta be honest. Thanks, Augie. Max from Los Angeles, California. Hi, Max. Hi, David. I've been betrayed by a woman who I thought was nice and kind. All you had to do was wait longer. But she left for Australia to live with a mutual acquaintance of ours in his room. He's living with roommates. She landed there. He and she is getting confusing. She landed there on Valentine's Day as if on purpose. Yeah, idealized love. I only found out what was going on a few days later after they already were having sex for a week. I'm so sorry. I mentioned this before to you previously. I blocked her and him. Yeah, I remember. Haven't heard from her since until a week ago. She left a comment under my YouTube video. Sometimes we reject people we actually like. Very cryptic, very much like her, very self-entitled, etc. And this is all after I told her to never watch my videos or contact me again. Because I sure as hell haven't watched her videos since February is she going to keep stalking me forever? I suspect she has covert BPD, MPD. Again, how do I know? One would. One wouldn't. <laughs> right? And I, even if I knew her, I wouldn't know what she's going to do in five years from now. When it comes to stalking, it's obsession. Obsession is because I have no life of my own. And if I'm obsessing on someone I knew that I lost, it's because I can't grieve. First step of grief is looking at myself. Grief hurts, not just because of the person that we can't talk to today, but because of the person we're left with, herself. A highly emotionally intelligent person doesn't feel bad anymore when they lose people. It's okay. I'm all right. I like myself. I can be, you can leave me for a day. You can leave me for the rest of my life. I'm okay. I love me. So somebody that can't look at myself, can't start grieving, and I have no life, I'll obsess. That obsession typically lasts one to two months, maybe three, of no contact, wherever it started, okay? There's a six month mark, and it's pretty scary after six months. After two years, they say, it'll never stop. Someone obsessed on you, with you for over two years will never stop obsessing on you. That's what is typically said in psychology. You guys who have stalkers for five years or like me, seven, eight years, they'll keep doing it. They'll keep obsessing on you. I don't know what they'll keep doing, but they'll keep obsessing on you for the rest of their life. Sorry, I can't help more. I'm sorry, Max. I think the best thing you could do is to heal from this relationship if you have it so that when you think of her and think of the relationship, there's no bad feelings. So it doesn't bother you that much. You don't worry about it too much. Your brain doesn't start calling. What is she going to do next? Well, it's like I, I don't really care what... Sam in Mexico does to me because I don't know them. There's no emotional attached to it. Somebody does something to me, I'll deal with it then. So heal from this stuff as much as you can and try to be out of sight and out of mind with them. You might want to wait a little while before you post stuff. Don't let people know what you're doing. Don't keep posting things when I'm doing and new pictures that she could obsess on and new people in my life. None of that. Doesn't even know any of that. Might want to be quiet for a little while, a month or two, see if it stops. I don't know how long this has been 
going on for. But hopefully she gets a life soon. Finds another person to obsess on. Okay? Uh, Diane Beatty. David, can you talk about BPD and future faking? Yeah. Yeah, I'll do a little bit now. Maybe I'll make a video. Maybe. Um, you know, we, we consider future faking as a, something a narcissist does. Well, but I think a future faking really is, is like love bombing. I don't really mean it, but I'm trying to get you caught up, right? I'm going to text you every day. I'm going to tell you how beautiful and amazing you are. I'm going to act like the best person in the world. And <clears throat> I'm a huge hero that just loves people and loves helping people take care of everybody, right? So I play all these games to get you hooked. And future fake would be one of them. But now we're talking about borderlines. Now, the narcissist, they idealize love. And they do get emotional and they do attach to people and, and stuff like this. So we might be talking about more idealizing, whether it's idealizing our future, just our whole relationship, each other. BPD tends to be serious when they're planning the future with you. Their emotions are so caught up, their hormones. They, they finally found someone that, you know, completes them, that will take care of them, that will carry them, make them feel well. Everything they wanted in life is finally here. And then we start planning the future. And they say, oh my God, I want to have kids with you and I can't wait to grow old with you and let's do this and let's open up a business and blah, blah, blah. It's literally just how they feel. It, they're, they're so overwhelmed with you in this relationship. That's what we tend to do. We start looking for our future, towards our future, planning our future. You'll notice people with personality disorders, especially cluster B, really can't plan. So it's just pipe dreams. It's like, oh, we're going to have kids someday. And it's like, okay, but right now you're drinking too much alcohol. Do you want to drink that much alcohol when we have children? Oh, God, I'm not talking about now. Well, name one thing you're going to do to have children someday in your life. What is that? You know, it's just BS. When people talk about things that we're going to do in the future, it usually takes many, many steps. Just start talking about step one with them and see where that goes. Okay? It's a way for manipulators to get you more attached faster, to trust them faster. But most people with BPD, they're, they, they, they're crushing on you. They're obsessed on you. They, you're amazing. Can't let you go. I want, to, I want to get involved with you and get situated with you. I want to live with you. Let's get married. Let's share phone plans together. More and more and more and more. You can't leave me. Okay? And this is plays a huge element to when the relationship is over and we're grieving and we miss them. Look at all those plans you made with a total stranger. You did not know who they were. I didn't know they were like this. They were. They didn't change. Their behaviors did. Be careful who you plan things with. Yeah? I mean, if you already know someone's not marriage material, don't talk about marriage. Okay? Thank you, Diane. If you had any more specific questions, please ask me. Thank you. And Monica from California. Hello. Good to see you again. What's weird is what whenever I would get triggered and sometimes teary-eyed about something, he wouldn't say anything. Not that he's responsible for how I handle my feelings, but I, I could, it could be that I cry and he talks to me as if I'm not crying at all when I clearly am. I went through this with family members too. Why do they act like this? Clearly someone is crying in front of you and you keep talking to them as if everything is normal. Hold on. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Hmm. Did that make any of you yawn? It might, especially if you have empathy. It's weird. Hmm? What does someone crying do to you? One of the worst sounds a human being can hear is a baby crying. It's just instinct to rush towards the baby, right? Some of us might get angry and annoyed and say, God, make that baby shut up. But we're all going to react to that. The people that don't don't connect with human beings at all and lack empathy severely. So we can have cognitive empathy. Yeah, I see you're crying. You must be sad. Does nothing to me. 
we can see a psychopath by just flashing them pictures and measuring their heart rate and things like this, right? We can see happy people smiling, two people in love, right? And then we can see a dead person, blood all over their face, someone crying, someone getting hit, right? And we react, oh, God, oh, not the psychopath. Doesn't care. Not saying they're a psychopath, but they definitely lack empathy. Severely. Not even a sadist. Just lacks empathy. Think about that. Why why are why is yawning can trigger us to yawn? Yeah. Because we're just so social animals. We're all connected somehow, some way, and take care of each other. We're very reactive to others around us. That is bizarre. That's someone who's dangerous. That's someone who will never be there for you. That's someone who does not understand you or care. May even have objectified you. You know, it's like, what are you going to do if your microwave cries? Right? This is weird. What are you doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Good question, Monica. Be careful of this person. Uh, Ruth from England. Hi, Ruth. A few years ago, I had a super crush on you. How common is it to have feelings towards therapists, coaches, life coaches online? Also, I hope you found love now. Thank you. That's nice. Is it common? Yeah, totally. I can't even remember what there's There's a phenomenon called. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Maybe one of you guys can remember. I would have looked it up, but... Um, there's a phenomenon of sharing and being open with your therapists or coach and they know you completely and they don't judge you. They're always the same, right? And this relationship has really been about me and me being vulnerable. It's not about you. I don't have to do anything in this relationship to so pay you. And I trust you. You know how to do the things I want. I want a healthy marriage and you just keep telling me how to do it. It makes sense. Well, maybe you. Stuff like this. But it's a phenomenon and yeah, it's fairly common. Yeah. Thank you. That's nice of you, Ruth, to tell me. Hope I answered your question. Let me know. And Liz, I can't remember where you're from. I'm sorry. I would just avoid all borderlines and narcissists if you want to be happy. Most people only stay involved with them because they don't know these people are ill these two groups are also extremely vengeful so why would you put yourself in that situation if you know about their problems um it i would love for it to be that simple liz but it's not at all it's not to say i just didn't know they're borderline or narcissist that's why i stayed with them for eight years doesn't work diagnosis doesn't matter what are they diagnosing? Their behaviors that you're putting up with and tolerating and living with for eight years. I'm not saying you, Lynn. I'm just using eight years as an example. And now, now I found out they're BPD, so I'm gone. I'm not saying, I'm sure people have done that, but don't forget that's at the end of an eight-year toxic abusive relationship. Sometimes we just leave anyway. Sometimes we only need that much of a push. But yeah, just not knowing there are red flags, Liz. If you had a toxic relationship with someone like this, you eventually left them. I guarantee there's some red flags that you didn't react to right away. Okay? And it happens from conditioning. No matter how toxic someone is, if they're just like my mom and dad, it's, it's, it doesn't, it's not as significant. It doesn't stand out as much. If I've never had a healthy relationship, what do I compare this to? Because we learn what love is. We learn what marriage is relationships from mom and dad we learn what a mother and a woman and a wife is and a husband and a father and a man is from our parents Freudian psychology we date our opposite gender parent especially if they didn't give us what we needed this is simple conditioning I didn't know that they were sick well if it takes eight years to know why why did it take eight years for someone to just say, oh, they have BPD? Oh, really? Oh, shoot. Why? Well, 
if they have EVD, then they're doing this, 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 and this, and this to you the whole time. Isn't that what matters? Right? Um, not only do these relationships tear down your sense of self, your self-awareness, stripping things away that you believe are you, but it tears down your self-esteem, your self-respect, and your self-worth. These are things we need to make big, hard changes like leaving my husband with my kids. That's huge. Huge. Right? My family doesn't, you know, I don't have a family. I don't have much support. I lost my friends. Yeah, due to this marriage. And now I have kids I have to be care. I have to take care of. I haven't worked in years. I have this husband that has threatened to do all these things to me. Why didn't they leave? Why didn't you just leave if you knew they were sick? Shit. Okay, Liz, use compassion and understand better. Always. Um, wise hoder. <laughs> Don't know where you're from. Hi, David. I have a question regarding splitting in BPD today. Marks a year since I was discarded by my alcoholic BPDX. I'm sorry that she discarded you like garbage. Congratulations for the last year of your life. I was with her for eight years exactly. Um, she, that's funny. I just used eight years as an example. She actually dumped me on our anniversary. Didn't you know she was sick? Why'd you stay? <laughs> we were best friends for two years before and the relationship developed naturally. That's a decade of intimacy. And we lived abroad together for three years. She had severe alcohol problems. But wasn't, so why did, why'd you stay with her? See that? See how that works? Um, you knew she was sick. Why'd you stay? Because your mother was an alcoholic. And, oh, and I didn't even finish. Not even just the relationship you're in does this. But if you grew up like that, they're already problematic. You're already vulnerable to these relationships. Now you got another one and self-esteem, self-worth, and self-respect were this low. Now they're even lower. It just, you know, difficult, really hard. Uh, she had severe alcohol problems, but was in denial and resented me for wanting her to treat it. I had my own reactive anger and abuse, verbal, but when she left me, she physically abused me. Threatened to wreck my car, threatened suicide to emotionally blackmail me. I went no contact immediately and only reached out once via email three months later with a therapist peer review letter taking accountability for my issues and expressing empathy for her. That was really nice. I read that last part wrong the first time I read it. I thought that she contacted you with a therapist peer reviewed letter, but sticking true to who we are, honest and respectful, and integrity, all this feels best, doesn't it? No matter what someone does to you. I hope you're proud of yourself. I hope it feels good. I'm sorry for your loss and uh, congratulations on your life. Oh, question. Sorry. Oh, and then you tell me at the bottom down here, I'm from Kansas. You're from Kansas. Thank you. My question is after a year, she's still not reached out and has never apologized for taking any accountability for actions. How can someone with BPD just pretend that the person they love for a decade doesn't exist? Keep in mind that she is the one who pursued me for two years and I wasn't really interested in anything more than a friendship. So one reason we don't apologize for bad behaviors is because we don't think they're bad. It's like, do you want a career criminal who has stolen things since he was 10 years old and he's now 50 and has stolen, you know, $2 million worth of belongings? Is he going to apologize for if you catch him stealing? Oh, hey, I'm really sorry. I feel all of a sudden now I feel horrible. No, it's not wrong. That's just one way. That's how I take it. You want to apologize for bad behaviors? You think it's okay. And then we accept that, that this person does these things and they think it's okay. Do I want them near me? No. Um, so how can someone be BD just pretend the person they love for a decade doesn't exist by reframing, you know, taking my cognitive, uh, information in, which doesn't work well for them at all using, you know, my mind, which is my emotions and my brain and my, my perception using all that to come out with what I think might be reality, which is far from it. You're a bad person. You're an abuser. You're a narcissist. You traumatize me. You're evil. I'm staying away from you. They also lacked object constancy. 
So when you go to work, they don't know they love you anymore. They don't know you are alive anymore. And in her brain, you may not even exist anymore. That's the problems we deal with people that have an emotional intelligence level of a seven-year-old and are very unstable. That's the problems. Okay? I'm really sorry. I am. Um, I hope you're talking to somebody and figuring this stuff out, making sense of what happened and expressing all your emotions and closing them, okay? I hope so. Um, hi, David. You know, people with MPD do the whole love bombing thing, then gradually over time devalue you. Do sociopaths, psychopaths do the same, but with more stealth? Are they harder to figure out? Yes, harder to figure out, Ruth. Um, and if I didn't say already, you said Ruth from the United Kingdom. Hi, Ruth. Do you know people in PD love bomb and then devalue? Do sociopaths, psychopaths do the same with more stuff? Typically, yeah. Um, it's a big difference between NPD and ASPD. It, it's a it's a big difference and real true psychopaths. Um, they love bomb just to get you. They, they try to, their hardest in life, psychopaths, sociopaths try their hardest in life to get someone to accept them, be in their life and never leave. And they cherish these, they'll protect these relationships and they'll hurt you if you try to do anything with them, someone outside. That's where they believe they're real loyal, except they'll screw this person over, no problem. Um, so they'll do the same though. They may love bomb and devalue you. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I guess they do. They, they, I mean, not all for sure. Not all, but they'll do the same thing and it can be harder to detect. I, I would say in a narcissist, there's some truth maybe to that love bomb. They, their emotions are high, their hormones, they might really like you, attracted to you. These can, so it, it's a little bit more convincing maybe. And as you get to know sociopaths, especially psychopaths, to me, they aren't as convincing because it's real hard for their affect to match what they're saying, real hard. I mean, they're just, they just got dead faces, just, I love you, I hate you. This is exciting. I'm bored. You know, it's like, um, the one difference is, is when they're done with you, they're done with you. They don't tend to Hoover. <laughs> they don't care. You're gone. I, I don't know if I answered your question, Ruth. Um, feel free to be more specific. Thanks. Rory from Ohio. Hi, Rory. Just had some hot tomato soup with cheddar. We are back to cold in Ohio. Yuck. Had to put heat on last night because we're supposed to get down to 38. Oh, ho, ho. there's 49 other states, Rory. My question, can someone be just a plain old jerk and not have NPD, BPD? My husband used to say all the time that he was sick and demented and that he had his demons. These were his excuses. Thanks, David. Yeah, be careful of people who say they have their demons, stuff like that. Just, just be careful of some of them. That usually means they know they're horrible people. They've done some horrible things that they may not be able to forgive themselves for. Or they know they don't really care. They know that everybody else would classify them as a demon if they knew. Just be careful. I've heard that from the most sickest people say stuff like that. Um, yes, it can be a plain old jerk. The, the term narcissist is used so much now. People aren't really saying NPD. You're just a narcissist. You're more narcissistic than the rest of us. We're all middle narcissistic and you're a little more so you're a narcissist that's it um and, and when you talk about a narcissist npd it's uh five there's nine diagnostic criteria you only need five what about someone that has four not a narcissist are they a jerk probably yeah so of course of course plain old jerk just insensitive selfish doesn't care a hard ass right Emily from South Africa. Hi, Emily. Thank you for answering my question on if narcissists know they are lying. And as someone who is starting to cook for more of themselves, I found the egg peeling advice very useful. 
Good. Why is it easy for narcissists to become delusional and paranoid? Why does long-term isolation, or I'm sorry, what does long-term isolation do to your emotional and physical health? Okay. Why is it easy for narcissists to become delusional and paranoid? Well, I'm just trying to think of how, why would that be easy? Um, that, that, that's a, the way their brain has been working since they're a child. Might get worse, but that's, that's from childhood. Um, not in touch with reality, can't handle the truth. That's really what it comes down to. I can't really look at myself and how bad I am. So I'm going to tell people I'm someone else. I'm not that bad. Maybe we're all a little guilty of that a little bit. Um, you know, paranoia. It's not that it's easy for them to get into paranoia. I think it's hard for them not to be paranoid, right? Someone who has paranoia, someone not in control of their environment, someone deathly afraid of being humiliated. Yeah. Stuff like this. Can't protect myself, take care of myself. Um, look at myself, take accountability. Those are big causes for delusional and paranoid thoughts, behaviors. What does long-term, and ask me more if you want to about that, please, Emily. Long-term isolation is awful. It's the worst thing you can do to someone else, let alone to yourself. Worst. Our biggest ultimate fear is being ostracized, exited out of the community, shunned, nobody. The biggest source of comfort in our lives, guys, are relationships. For us, it's been the biggest source of stress. It is. It can be. But we need people or it's death. If you go try and live out in the wild, I don't care how prepared you are. I don't care how knowledgeable you are. I don't care what you take with you. I don't care if you have everything you need. You will not live without some sort of interaction, communication with human beings. You will die. Show me someone that hasn't. And if you know someone that's doing that, then they probably are having contact with other people, right? The internet, phone, I visit in town every once in a while. I'm talking no one, complete isolation. It's, it's, it's how we make our prisoners go insane. Very common for people on death row to go insane. it will begin to start a chemical reaction inside your brain and your body. It will deteriorate your health. And emotions are your body doing things. That's physical. We need to marry these two together and realize it's the same thing. Okay. Um, it causes anxiety causes depression, starts to cause self-doubt. It will lower your self-respect, your self-worth, your self-esteem. Slowly, it'll start affecting how you care for yourself. You'll start making mistakes and eventually one of those mistakes will, will take your life. We need each other, guys. The fighting online the, the revenge thoughts, all this stuff is just crap. What a waste of life that is. We need each other. We need to be there for each other. Awful. Worst thing to do to somebody, isolate them. Worst thing to do to ourselves. I've said that ever since I started my channel. You can get better with people and you can get worse without them. Okay? If I, it, the number one way to get worse, I say, is sit in a dark room by yourself with a bottle of liquor. You'll get worse. Number one way to get better, talk to someone. That's it. People do this. People help us. They caused it. They'll help it. Okay? We need to learn to have better relationships. That's all we can do. Okay? Um, thank you, Emily. Victoria from the Bay Area again. Hi, Victoria. I have a question. Back in the early 50s, back in the early 50s, they used MK on the soldiers. Do you know if this is a practice they use today? 
uh, on the young man that signed up for the military. My son is leaving for military and I just want to know if MK Ultra will be something he's going to experience. Well, Victoria, I know what that is very well. That was something that they did a long time ago. They, they've given soldiers LSD for experiments, stuff like this. So, Victoria, you're so scared. I'm so sorry. I, I have not ever heard of anything like that being practiced for decades. I'm not saying it isn't. But an enlisted man like your son, go in there and, and serve his two years, four years, he's probably not going to even hear about that. Okay? I'm sorry. Oh, stop looking. Stop looking for this stuff. I don't know if that just fell upon your lap. Most people don't know what that is, MK Ultra, Mind control. Um, long time ago, that stuff was used. I, I'm not saying... On some soldiers, especially, who knows what the military is doing. The mil mil our military is completely out of control. We don't even know how big it is anymore. I don't know if you guys know that. Uh, the IRS wanted to, like, audit it. <clears throat> Impossible. Nobody, not even in the military, knows how big our military is. That's pretty scary. Hundreds and hundreds of bases all over the world surrounding our enemies. Disgusting. Um, try not to worry, Victoria, and tell yourself positive things. Say, I'm so proud of my son for doing this. What a great service to the country. What a man. Be proud and show people and tell them. Be proud. Look at my son. Okay? Get a picture of him in his fatigues and show people. Look. Look what my son's doing. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that great? You visit him and look forward and make some plans what you want to do when he's out. Okay? I'm really sorry, Victoria. I don't think you need to worry about that. Uh, hi, David. Tituan again. And I have to say, you made me laugh by pronouncing my name. But DW, I didn't meet a single person not from France pronouncing it well. And so you told me here, and I, I, by what you're saying, Tituan makes me believe I'm saying it correctly. But maybe I'm saying it differently now than I did last week. But I, it's important for me to know. I don't really like it when people call me Dave. So I get it. I want people, I want to get your name right. T21. Because you have T E A space T O U space A N. T21. Right? T21. Help me. Thanks. Uh, does the anger BPDX have towards you ever fade away? And do they realize the consequence of their action at some point? Again, it, you know, some, some do, some don't. Where does this person fall? How would I know? Anger is such a strong emotion. If we don't express it, we could be angry for the rest of our lives. Okay? So if she's not expressing this anger, or this person is not expressing their anger towards you very well, they may stay angry forever. The good thing is they lack object consciousness, so they might forget who you are and that they're even mad at you anymore. Yay. <laughs> uh, do they realize the consequence of their actions at some point? Some do, some don't. Most of them, never. Okay. Uh, Ross from Connecticut. Hi, Ross. Do coverts feel remorse for ghosting their spouse? It is said that narcissists have some remorse. Yes. And they even have some empathy. So how much empathy have they shown you? <laughs> That's about how much remorse they have. <laughs> and again, each one's different. Each narcissist is different. Some narcissists have more empathy than others. Right? If you put in sociopath, I'd say no. No remorse. Whatsoever. None. <laughs> okay? Narcissist, some depending on the individual, okay? Alex from Utah. Hi, Alex. I was wondering if it is possible to understand what someone's diagnosis is without them disclosing it. Is there any way to tell the difference between a BPD diagnosis and an NPD diagnosis or other disorders? You know, I'm not totally sure, Alex, what you're asking me. Can you be more specific down below? 
today, tomorrow, and I'll I'll talk about it more next week. Because I'm just not I don't really since I don't really understand it, I hate to answer it. Uh is there any way to tell the difference between a BPD diagnosis and M P D diagnosis? I well, I mean, the DSM diastis Diagnostic to Statistics Manual for Mental Illness, Volume 5, is what professionals use to diagnose patients, clients. And, and you can go look in there and you can see the diagnostic criteria for each personality disorder. And they're very different. Very. They're, they're all specifically different. Um... If that, I, I don't know if that's what you're asking me. I'm sorry. Sorry, Alex. Can you ask me again? Thank you. Lel from Scotland. I have another question for you. My dad, who seems to have narc tendencies, constantly calls my fiance by my abuser ex-boyfriend's name. He even did it the evening I announced our engagement. And I think this is the last question, guys, but this is a good one. I remember I read this earlier. He knows I don't like it and has even apologized for it in the past, but has done it at every opportunity since apologizing. I've tried my best to ignore it. As I assumed, he was doing it to get a reaction. Yeah, I'll give you a reaction. Uh, I've tried my best, to, but it really hurts, and it's so disrespectful towards me, my lovely fiancé. He only met my ex a couple of times and knows what he did to me. He isn't the kind of man you can discuss these things with. No, it's not much of a man at all. Even as a child, if we ever fell out with one another, he would happily ignore me for days, leaving it up to me to make things right. I really want it to stop, but don't want the guilt of not having a relationship with my dad. You're saying, what would you do? Well, it's too hard for me to say what I would do because uh, in a paragraph, right? It doesn't matter what I would do. I would need to know everything about the situation and all that. And what really matters is what you do. But what's more important is how you feel. How you feel. He's abusing you and neglecting you, which is abuse. And I'm so sorry. And here we are. Right? A couple few decades later of it. And he hasn't changed. Still does it. What can you control? Not him. So here's what we do, guys. Okay? The, the boundaries, right? I'm not going to go into what boundaries are. I'm just going to tell you what to do. Or suggest. People aren't allowed in my life unless they care for me. Unconditionally. I don't mean take care of me, but care. Meaning they care how I feel. And we just put it right on the table. You make me feel A, B, and C. I mean, if you care, say you care about me, and I tell you that you make me feel really bad. I'm being general, but I can be specific, right? You scare me. You may, and I put it out to you. What would you do? How would you react? Anything but make me feel better, relationship is over, including with your dad. I'm I'm just, I've had it with these. There's some relationships we take abuse from, right? There's some. We just have to. It's my dad. No, you don't. That's your choice at this point. You're an adult. Stop letting him abuse you. You can't control him. Tell him to stop. If he doesn't stop, stop talking to him. How do I deal with the guilt? Be true to who you are. Don't yell at him. Don't call him names. Don't abuse him. Don't ignore him. Don't try to make him feel better. You make me feel this way. You aren't allowed to. Can you control yourself? Because you can never, ever bring that name up again. Not just to him. Anybody else. Any other time. Never. And how dare you bring up a name of someone who abused me? Do you care that that person abused me? Does that matter to you? But here it goes, Dad, when you do this, it makes me feel as many feelings, negative feelings you can come up with. Emotional language means I describe my emotions, describe what it does to your body. Okay? If he doesn't care, what are you going to do? Do you feel guilty allowing people to abuse you? 
I hope so. I hope there's some sense of self and, and self-preservation and nur self-nurturing there. Where if I just allow someone to keep hurting me, yeah, I feel guilty. Do you? <clears throat> if he kept doing this for another 10 years, would you feel guilty knowing this now? <clears throat> that you allow people to hurt you? Wouldn't you feel bad? And what can you do? You can't control them. You can ask them to stop and then you create more distance. That's it. You aren't in control of this relationship or him. And we don't accept being abused. We accept who someone is. This is your dad. And obviously he never has given you what you needed. And don't dare tell me he has. And I'm not talking about money and clothes, food. What you really need, what's more important, security, autonomy, connection, privacy. I bet he hasn't supplied those things to you as a child. So you're never going to get it. He'll never be your dad that you want and need. He's just another person in your life. Do you want that in your life? All you have control of is get further away from him. And you tell him, I have a term. You're never allowed to do this to me again. And you need to decide what you're going to do if he does. You want to give him, a, you want to give him 101 chances? Because he's already done it. Someone that apologizes for behaviors and continues them is manipulating you. They don't think it's wrong. They're not going to stop it. Okay? So he doesn't think it's wrong to neglect you, to abuse you, or to make you feel bad. Doesn't bother. And I'll prove it. When you go and tell him. When you tell him, write it down. How many... I, I mean, I bet if you tried hard enough, you could come up with 20 bad feelings. And you just tell him, Dad, when you call my the person I love by someone else's name who used to abuse me, I feel betrayed, upset, angry, hate, whatever it is. Do you want me to keep feeling this way or are you going to stop? I need to know right now. And if he doesn't make you feel better about it, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Are you going to just ignore it like you have been? That doesn't work. Are you going to ask him to stop? That didn't work. Are you going to ask him to apologize? That didn't work. What works? What do you think works? That's why you're here asking me. There's only one thing that works. Ever do it again and I'm not talking to you ever again. Because you don't have much of a relationship with him anyway. I always say don't threaten no, we don't threaten people that we love and that we're committed to for life. Okay? Someone who's abused you your whole life, threaten them. Because you guys aren't connected, aren't very healthy attached. He's not meeting your needs. So he's not really in your life. He's just someone in proximity to you that makes you feel bad. Get further away. And we can start, if you want to try the healthy way, we write down everything he's not allowed to do to you. And then you say, Dad, you're not allowed to do these things to me. Do you agree? And you let him decide. Because if he says no, then he's the one that doesn't want anything to do with you. you not you. You just say no. You're, you're going to keep abusing me. Then I have to stay away from you. Okay? That's it. I'm not saying it's easy. Okay? But we don't need to make it more complex than that. Do we? You've got to take care of yourself and the reason you're in this pickle is because you weren't taught how. Your dad never taught you to take care of yourself because he didn't take care of you. So that you knew how. There's problems that need to be fixed in your own personal life. Okay? And, and they're all fixable. They're all healable. But, but work on that with someone. And start creating healthier boundaries. Meaning I'm rising, raising my self-worth. If you value honesty and respect, then you'll demand it. You'll be that, and you'll demand it from people in your life. If he doesn't value honesty or respect, which clearly he doesn't, why is he in your life? Because he's your dad, who never gave you what you needed, who was never there for you. And I know, yeah, you look, I, I'm not trying to say he's a bad dad, but this is absolutely bad. Bad. Awful. It's disgusting. 
It really is. It's some really bad, nasty, psychological abuse, devaluing, judging. It's just gross. And I mean, someone who's traumatized you and abused you, he keeps bringing up his name anyway. What's wrong with him? Is your dad a sadist? Does he enjoy hurting you? He's a control freak, that's for sure. Very judgmental. Probably hates himself. Usually is why people act this way. They hate themselves. You're not going to fix that. You're not going to change it. You're not going to help it. Just accept him finally for who he is, who he's showing you, and stay away from him. You want to keep in touch? You know, a little text message every few months? Figure out what you want. How you, what kind of relationship do you want? And then start crossing everything off that he's incapable of. List 10 things you want with him in a relationship. I want to talk to you every day. I want you and I to say I love you every day. I want, well, he's incapable of that, right? It'll just make you feel bad. So you start crossing those off. And then what are you left with? Talking every three months, text only. Be because I know he didn't teach you to protect yourself, but you better start. Because someone like him will, if, if able to, ruin your marriage, ruin your relationship. And if he's ever, I mean, he, he doesn't he owe your fiance an apology? I would demand that. My mother mistreated my wife. Oh, man. Apologies, like, one out of many things she better do. Start taking control. You're in control. You're in control. Stop allowing him to be in control. Because when he's in control, he damages you. Dad is supposed to be involved in your life and show you direction. Dad failed. Failing. Miserably. Miserably. I hope you have a good husband. I hope you're in love because the type of dad you have means you have a horrible husband. That's what he taught you. To allow horrible, disrespectful, abusive, neglectful people into your life and not care for yourself or protect yourself. So if you're doing any of those things, congratulations. You did that all on your own, even with people not showing you. Disgusting. I'm sorry. Make yourself feel better. Know what you have control over and do it. Okay? Guilt. Don't, don't be afraid of guilt, guys. As long as you stay true to who you are, you have nothing to be guilty of. You're not responsible for him. You're not responsible for his feelings. Start understanding that he's taught you to do that. Okay, you're responsible for your feelings and you do what you have to to protect yourself and make yourself feel better. Not leave it up to him. He doesn't care. So we go to him, Dad, you've made me feel all these ways. See what he says. If he doesn't try to make you feel better, that's it. That's it. See you at Christmas. And if you feel guilty, talk to someone about it and it'll go away. Okay? Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, all of you. That's all of them. Thanks. Please subscribe, share, like, ask questions. Most of all, love yourself first. See you next week. Bye-bye.